just had a phone call. Well, what's unusual about that? From New York. New York? A transatlantic person-to-person -person phone call. Did you know it's only one o'clock over there? I oh, know, they're five hours behind us. It's amazing. I've nearly finished my tea. She hadn't even started lunch. Who hadn't? What? Who hadn't started the lunch? Judy Bell. Well, Judy Bell that was. Then, of course, uh, Judy Polanski. Now, Franco. No, no, I tell her nice Schwartz. Judy Schwartz. Blimey, she's got a few miles on the clock. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you saying she's been married three times? Well, that's not unusual over there. I just wonder how much a call like that would cost. And she was in no hurry, no hurry to get off that phone at all. And there weren't any pips. I thought there'd have been pips. Never mind about the pips. Who is she? Well, I suppose you could call her an old flame. Well, why did she ring? Oh, she's coming over to England in a few weeks. Wanted to look me up. A voice from the past, eh, Dad? Yes, and you know. It was as clear as a bell. 3,000 miles! You'd have thought she was in the next room. Is Schwartz coming? No, he's dead. <laughs> no, I'm not another widow. Now, wait a minute. Judy and I go back a long way. I knew her long before I knew your mother. We were in the Blitz together. We were in the same shelter when they bombed Moorcroft Street. That means something. <laughs> We were very close at one time. What happened? We quarrelled. At the height of our affair, she stood me up. We'd arranged to meet at the White Bridge, the one in the park, and she never came. Next time I saw her, she was with Tony Wright. He had a Vesper and she always wanted to travel. <laughs> now she's got in touch, perhaps she still fancies you. Well, it was over 30 years ago, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Wonder if she's changed. Don't know about her. You certainly have. Well, I may be a little greyer, a little thick around the waist, but I'm still quite presentable. You're a stone overweight, Dad. Do you know what that's like? It's like carrying a bag of potatoes everywhere. Every time you go upstairs, you're carrying a bag of potatoes. Every time you bend over the flower bed, so does your bag of potatoes. Everywhere you go, it's Henry Willows and his bag of potatoes. And one day, if you're not careful, you're going to look like a bag of potatoes with feet. Don't exaggerate. When was the last time you buttoned your jacket? When was the last time you could get into your corduroy suit? Yes, you're right, Matthew. Yes, I've abused my body for 30 years and now it's taking its revenge. Perhaps I should put her off. Ah, oh, there's still time to get in shape. You could go on a crash diet. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I ought to see a doctor first. Why? Well, they say you should get medical advice before you take weight off. You didn't take advice when you put it on. Oh, no. It's the weight that's dangerous. Yes, I suppose so. You don't go to the doctor and say, I'm going out for a big meal tonight, will my body stand it? Well, no. Well, no, we'll start now. You don't need that. <laughs> Wait a minute. You don't need it either. No. Well, she's not coming to see me, then. Tired, hungry, and irritable. Good. It's beginning to work. No, I don't think this jogging's a good idea, Matthew. But, Dad, look at the improvement. Last week you could barely run down the road. Now you're really putting something into it. I can see the sweat running off you. I'm not surprised. I've just been chased by a rock viler. I only just got away. You see? That's how much you've improved. Last week it had caught you. Last week I wouldn't have been running. I ain't jogging. I I've just gone through the pain barrier tonight, and I'm ravenous. All right. You can have a banana. <laughs> I have one more banana. I won't be jogging, I'll be swinging through the trees. <laughs> well, you've had all your diet bars, Dad. Well, I've got to have something. Don't crack now. But what is it all for? For Judy, she's coming next week. So. It's very light, Matthew. It's honeycomb centres. I'm eating holes most of the time. I'm disappointed in you after all the sacrifices. Now, wait a minute. I'm the one that made the sacrifices, not you. I'm sure I've lost weight. We'll see, shall we? Have you been on the scales? Well, now, just remember, I'm wearing a tracksuit. And underpants. How much do underpants wear? Keep them on. You were wearing them when you started. And both feet on the scales. <laughs> and take your hand off the bed rail. Well? Blimey. What? You've lost a stone. Have I? <laughs> now I knew it. Matthew, leave the room. I'm going to try on my corduroy suit. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, what do you think? I can get into it and I can button the jacket. Yes, well done, Dad. Now I look at you, I can see you've lost weight. You're much thinner in the face. Yep. What do you mean, thinner in the face? Yes, it's a pity. Your face has gone. Has it? You've lost your face. And the neck. Neck? It's gone scrawny. Well, what am I going to do? Well, there's not much you can do. You can be fat with a smooth, plump face, or you can be slim with a skinny face. <laughs> no, it's the skin that worries me. Well, what's wrong with the skin? There's too much of it. <laughs> and it's gone sort of leathery. I suppose that's the diet. There's a lot of slack, and we've dried up all the natural oils. It needs feeding. I think I'll have a fry-up. No! <laughs> we don't want to undo all the good work. What good work? My face is gone and I've got a neck like a turkey. Well, we can soon fix that. We'll get you some moisturising cream, give you a facial, tone up the skin. No, no, that's beauty treatment. I'm not having beauty treatment. Well, I'm not. No one needs it more than you. <laughs> I'd like to do something with the hair as well, perhaps darken it. You're not darkening my hair. All right, what about streaks? It just means pulling it through a cap. You're right? not pulling it through a cap either. <laughs> no, I'll settle for grey and distinguished. Goes with a corduroy suit. Yes. Pity about the suit. Well, what's wrong with the suit? It's got flared trousers. <laughs> Time for your mud pack, then. Oh, not another one. It's working wonders. Well, how do I look? Just like Peter Pan. Are you sure? When she sees you, she's gonna flip. She say, how's he do it? What's he taking? Or has he sold his soul to the devil? All right, don't get carried away, Matthew. He's only coming to see me for old times' sake. After three marriages, I think she's been carrying a torch for you all along. Matthew, she's travelled the world, met all sorts of people. What does she want with me? Dad, you can take the girl out of Neesden, but you can't take Neesden out of the girl. <laughs> she still remembers the boy next door. Now, get on with that mud pack. We'll have a go at those eyebrows later. You leave my eyebrows out of this, what would people say? No one's gonna know. Didn't you ever use beauty aids when you were young? All I ever used was brill cream and a little boot black to emphasise the moustache. <laughs> Didn't carry on like a drag queen. <laughs> and I don't think this is working. The only way I'm gonna improve this skin is take it off and iron it. <laughs> no, you believe it. Last week you had more lines than Clapham Junction. Now it's as smooth as a baby's bottom. Now get on with that mud pack. Hi. Hi. You're just like him. Am I? Oh. <laughs> Your pa. <laughs> I wouldn't tell him that. You are Matthew. Yeah. I'm Judy. Judy Schwartz. But you weren't coming until next week. Oh, I had to change my itinerary, early, Matthew. If I was going to take in Stratford and Spain and meet the Christmas in Rome, I had to get an earlier flight. The bottom line is I'm a week early. Yep, that sure is the bottom line. <laughs> yeah, come through. Well, where is he? He's, uh, out. Oh, but I'd hope to spend the whole afternoon with him. He'll have to take a rain check, Judy. He's, uh, got something on. <laughs> uh, can he meet you? Yes, I'm staying at the Royal. Tell him to meet me in reception at 7.30 and not to be late. I don't want him standing me up again. Wait a minute. He stood you up. 30 years ago. Almost broke my heart, Matthew. The son of a gun. <laughs> don't waste the whole afternoon. I thought I might try and pull in Mother's grave. Good idea. I'll tell him you call. Matthew, did I hear... <laughs> Just a friend. Under treatment, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'll tell Pa to be there at 7.30. Have a nice day! <laughs> As good as new. No flares. Only the nostrils. What? You're excited, aren't you? Oh, I'm dreading it. Why? She's lovely. You saw her. Yes, and she saw me. In a mud pack. 
She must have thought, what a Jesse. She didn't recognise your dad. Well, how do you know? Because your own mother wouldn't have recognised you, not under two inches of volcanic mud. No, I'm not so sure. Judy may have been flighty, Matthew, but she was never gullible. She didn't know your dad, honestly. Ah, you smell good. Yes, well, <clears throat> I thought I'd use plenty of spray. Forget the ozone layer for one night. <laughs> good idea. There's only one thing that worries me. What's that? The hearing aid. You're not going to wear the hearing aid. Well, I ought to. Dad, after all we've achieved, why? Because I won't be able to hear what she's saying. <laughs> but you don't always wear it. Uh, no, but there'll be a lot of background noise, music, conversation. I don't want to look like a cretin. Then do what you usually do, lip read. Uh, I can't lip read Americans. They don't open their mouths enough. <laughs> well, that's going to be a right turn off. You look like a pensioner. <laughs> I could keep my head turned away, I suppose. You can't do that all night. You get a stiff neck. Well, we just have to hope she doesn't notice, that's all. And there's another thing. Sometimes it whistles. <laughs> whistles? I didn't know that when. When someone gets close to it. How close? Well, close. <laughs> Quite close. Well, sort of. Very close. Oh. You expect to get close, then? Well, you never know. We are old friends. I see. Well, what I suggest is, once you've got onto her wavelength, slip it in your pocket and just feel your way. <laughs>